your world today Such a strange and amusing place One day you buy a rocket ship under pants And then the next they're in outer space that newborn home from the hospital, you know, there's no manuals that come home with them, so it can be like exciting and super terrifying at the same time. I remember when I brought Taylor home from the hospital, I had no clue what to do with him. So all I did was hold him, because I, I was just afraid to even put him down. Right. Yeah. Well, to demystify those first few days at home, we've invited Dr. Laura Jana from the Pampers Parenting Network. She is the author of Heading Home with Your Newborn. It's a she wonderful knows what book. She's talking about. Yes, so welcome to welcome. MommyCast. So good to join you. So bringing that newborn home. I mean, Paige and I have talked about this. I never had any experience with a newborn. I didn't babysit a lot anyway, um, but I think most people don't leave their newborns with babysitters, so nobody really has a lot Until of experience. Until you have your own, right. right. Right, and I'll let you in on a little secret. Even pediatricians, I was a pediatrician before I was a parent. Mm -hmm. It's a very different process of what you know as a pediatrician and what you know when you go home with the well, newborn. Well, you know, the, the, the information and then the application of it, you know, that's it's, it's take some experience, right? It does. And one of the things, if you have a good pediatrician, one of the things I want new parents to know is they will always remember what it was like to not know the things they know now That's and true. share them with you. That's mm -hmm. true. That's true. And I think a lot of people are afraid to call their pediatricians, but clearly in that newborn phase, it seems like... You know, never is it more true that there's no such thing as a stupid question. Mm -hmm. In the newborn period, I tell people, if you think that there's a problem, I may tell you it's nothing, but you call. You right, call your right. pediatrician to make sure you know. As you get a grasp of what's normal and what's not, then you don't need to call as often. Well, okay, so what are the things you tell your the new parents that come with come to you with their little babies? What, what are the things you want them to know in the very early days? Well, you know, first and foremost, I have to watch out for the safety, the medical issues mm -hmm. and things. So we always talk about fever and jaundice and those sorts of things before we send anybody home from mm -hmm. the hospital. But I also like to add in the information about the practical side that yeah. often gets overlooked. And that can be yeah. the basics. I mean, it's the pee, the poop, the diapering, all those things that sometimes mm -hmm. as pediatricians we get busy, we're so used to it. Mm -hmm. And you get home, and the first 24 hours, you know you're at a loss if you haven't taken care of a baby before. Well, I think the first thing the first thing is feeding the baby. I mean, sure. if you're, are you breastfeeding, you're bottle feeding, and that, oh, that's, that's that in and of itself decisions. is a whole yeah. kind of an area that a lot of people are just clueless in and have to learn very quickly and if it's not going right figure out what to do and that's right where you away. want that close relationship yeah. because those first few days are so important mm -hmm. whether you're establishing breastfeeding or you're bottle feeding one of the things where I think you know parents all talk about pee and poop mm -hmm. but peeing and pooping actually plays into that whole feeding part in that if the systems are working right and the baby's getting enough to mm -hmm. drink then you now have pee and poop to show for right. it yeah. but when you do that then you also have to get into the practical side of diapering mm -hmm. you have to understand and whether or not a baby's constipated. Mm -hmm. And those are the things yeah, where I've you had really that kind of experience before I had my you know, my first, I'm sitting there watching him in his car seat, just he's asleep, but he looked like he's really struggling. And I went to a class where the pediatrician was like, Yeah, most of us don't witness other people going. A lot yeah. of us make those faces and that's okay. It's not a sign of constipation, it's just they're going. And I was like, Oh, phew. you know, what a relief, you know. Right. Seems constipation that I to throws that. people because babies can make a whole lot of noise and effort and not Nothing. be constipated. Right. But it is something to discuss with your pediatrician. The other thing is the colors of poop. They yes. change colors over time. You yeah, but right. you're not changing what you feed them, so it's really bizarre. And then, you know, even just the right. simple act of changing the diaper, where right. you need to know how often do you change it? Do you have to diaper over the umbilical cord? Right. Or do you, and Everybody gets freaked out by the umbilical cord. You know, yeah. for anybody who's had kids a while ago, I mean, the changes in diapers where you've got the cutout mm -hmm. for the umbilical cord right. so it doesn't rub against yeah. it before I actually it cut my... Did, Did you? And now you I don't just have folded to. folded mine down. Yeah, I folded right. it down, yeah. too. So those sorts of things are very mm -hmm. important to know. And then also keeping tabs on how often they go. Yeah. Same thing with pee. There are now diapers that have the little strips that show you in the mm -hmm. diaper mm -hmm. when the diaper's wet, so you know your baby peed, even in those first few days when there's yeah. not a lot. Yeah, you know what I found I thought was interesting? Like, with my first, because it seems like with my first, I was so consumed with the, the impending labor and delivery, which was so scary, this big unknown or whatever, that I didn't think about putting together some of the stuff that I could have done ahead of time, like 
really understanding that you should have a, like a bath station where you yes. have everything right. right there and you don't have to remember it because once you come home with this baby and you're recovering and the baby needs stuff and you're sleep deprived and you forget stuff, I mean, it's really right. easy to get there and to go, oh, I don't even have a towel. Unfortunately, a lot of people get wrapped up in the pregnancy. Labor and delivery is the end point mm -hmm. and it's just starting. Yeah, yeah, right. And you forget the rest Boy, of it. Boy, that is an understatement. Yes. So <laughs> bathing is a very good example because yeah. once you're confident in what you're doing and you know what to have and having things on hand is the most important thing because you cannot leave that baby Hand on for the baby five all the time. Seconds. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Right. Um, so having everything you need, the washcloths, the baby soap, the, you know, the towel, the diapers, the change of clothes, and if you feel the need that you have to have that phone next to you because you can't miss the call, then put it next Make to your sure baby backup, but you may yeah. not leave that baby while you're bathing. Yeah. I think also, you know, one of the things that I was most afraid of is, you know, you're constantly watching your baby, listening for it, breathing and all of this, and when you think that baby is getting sick. I don't care if they're one week old or one year old, that first fever throws people. Yeah. And knowing what to do about it and what fever really is. Fever in and of itself is not inherently dangerous. Right. It's right. an indication. Now, in a newborn, it's always important to understand, fever is taken much more seriously. And people will sit back and say, should I call? Should I not call? It's not a very high fever. Call. With a newborn, that's an easy answer. You always call. Right. The other thing is, I always say there's the fever fear mm -hmm. factor, but there's also the rectal thermometer fear factor. <laughs> so you, you take a thermometer, and I talk to a parent, and I pick this up, and um, and they show that, and exactly the look on your face. It's scary when you have the the, re the the regular rectal thermometer that I used on my kids was very long, and you're wondering like at what How point far am I does it go in? Yeah, you know, done. And that's where if you have somebody good, you get your information from a good source. They don't forget to tell you how far it goes in. What position right. do you put the baby in? Here's the secret I will tell you, though. It usually doesn't bother babies. Mm -mm. Yeah, As an adult, it, the concept bothers adults. Mm -hmm. Every new parent I've ever said the word rectal thermometer to mm -hmm. cringes yeah. when I say it. Yeah. Right. It goes in a very short distance. Some of the newer models help you make sure that it doesn't go in further than it needs to. Mm -hmm. Like that one. Right, I like this that. one. Yeah. That's great. Okay? But it also... I've done this enough times on babies who are sleeping who don't even wake up. Right, right. It does not hurt them. Now, on the flip side of that, rectal thermometers, are, rectal temperatures are the gold standard for newborns. Well, they're just Later most on, accurate. You, can, you can't get exactly. it in their mouth and their, their armpits are not as accurate. Well, and right. accuracy Accu is what yeah. you want. In the newborns, the take-home message is get comfortable with a rectal thermometer. What about going out in public? Because I think that's another thing, especially now we're all concerned about the flu season and everything. I mean, going out in public with your newborn, at what point... I mean, I wouldn't do it the first several weeks. I mean, what, the what secret point? to going out and out in the real world with a newborn mm -hmm. is it's close contact with other people. Mm -hmm. It's not the great outdoors. Right. So you want to take a walk around the block when you've got a four-day-old. As long as they're dressed appropriately, you cover their hands. They've got mm -hmm. something over their heads. They're dressed well. You're fine, and you can do that. It's going out if you're in a crowded elevator, in a crowded shopping mall, or going yeah. to a dinner party and passing the baby around. That is a yeah. very bad idea yeah. when right. you're going to be exposing them to germs at a time when their immune systems don't work well. This has been super helpful. So we really appreciate having right. you here. Oh, Thank My you pleasure. so much. For more information on bringing your newborn home, go to mommycast.com. Newborn home. Can wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> I was licking Let's my lips. Up. My tongue was sticking out when you started. <laughs> <laughs>